This installment of SWTPC 6800 videos showcases the modifications the original owner performed on this system. Specifically, we'll be taking a closer look at the MPA CPU card and the MPB motherboard. The MPA CPU card has been modified in three ways. The ROM socket connections have had a minor change to make use of a larger, newer ROM monitor. The baud rate generator connections have been modified to provide a faster baud rate to expansion cards. And the card's reset signal originating from the system's reset push button has had an interesting alteration. The Motorola MicBug ROM IC originally included in the kit has been replaced with SWT PC's SWT bug, pronounced SWAT bug. The original MicBug ROM is comprised of only 512 bytes of data. This is accessed by the ROM's 9 address pins. Pin 15, the ROM socket's 10th address pin, was originally tied low. The MPA CPU card's address decoding logic places the MicBug ROM's 512 bytes of data at addresses hex E000 to E1FF. The SWAT bug ROM IC consists of twice the amount of data, 1024 bytes, so it requires use of the ROM socket's 10th address pin. The manual for the SWAT bug ROM provides instructions for modifying the MPA CPU card by cutting the trace connecting the ROM IC socket's 10th address pin to ground and adding a jumper to A9 on the address bus. This puts the ROM data at addresses hex E000 to E3FF. You can see the cut trace and added jumper exactly as the manual directs. The baud rate generator IC outputs a variety of frequencies, but only a handful of them are implemented on the MBA CPU card. A popular modification was to tap into the unused 9600 baud signal and bring it to one of the two user-defined pins on the card socket for use with MPS serial cards. Directions for this mod were provided in the SWAT bug manual. Rather than using one of the user-defined pins, the previous owner of this system opted to replace the 150 baud line with 9600 baud instead. Any expansion cards jumpered for 150 baud will actually receive a clock for 9600 baud. The reset signal has also been modified, making use of this dead bug IC stuck on the board. This one took a little time to sort out, and I still don't quite fully understand what the original owner was trying to accomplish. As the original owner was an electrical engineer, naturally, he redrew SWTPC's schematic with his changes. The reset push button on the system is debounced by a 555 timer circuit. The output of this circuit drives the CPU reset signal, as well as the reset signal on the SS50 bus. The reset signal is tri-stated by one instance of IC15 when the bus available signal from the CPU is active. The bus available signal would become active only when the CPU receives a halt signal from another device on the SS50 bus. This could occur if a device wants to write to RAM or another device directly, a form of direct memory access. Much like the address and data buses being controlled by an external device when halt and bus available are active, the reset signal is also controlled by the external device. The original owner's schematic replaces the tri-state inverter with a NAND gate wired like a regular inverter, disabling the ability for an external device to take control of the reset signal. If this is true, when an external device attempts to control the reset line, there will be bus contention with the output of this inverter. But that isn't really the case here. The way this mod was actually wired on the card doesn't fully take the tri-state inverter out of the circuit. A trace coming from the output of the tri-state inverter and going to the CPU's reset signal was cut, and the output of the NAND gate acting as an inverter is fed into the CPU instead. The NAND gate taps power and ground from the onboard 5 volt regulator, and the NAND gate's input is tapped into the output of the 555 timer debounce circuit, which is the same place the tri-state inverter receives its input. While the output of the tri-state inverter going to the CPU was cut, the output is still connected to the SS50 connector. This means that an external device could take control of the reset signal for the entire system except the CPU, which can only be reset by the system's reset push button. I'm not sure exactly what this accomplishes, and I'm also not familiar with any expansion cards that actually use the halt function. 
a popular modification that was typically done to the CPU card to support Flex version 2.0 disk operating system was to remove the onboard 128-byte RAM IC used by the ROM monitor and replace it with a memory expansion card. To do this, the user would modify the CPU card's addressing logic to allow the CPU to access a memory expansion card at the same starting address that the 128-byte RAM IC had originally. This modification takes advantage of unused address space in the system's memory map to extend the amount of memory starting at hex A000 from 128 bytes to 8 kilobytes. This mod wasn't performed on this card, which makes sense because the only physical documentation I found with this slot for Flex is for version 1.0, which doesn't require this modification. The motherboard in this computer is called the MP-B and is really more of a backplane, consisting of two types of expansion card headers, called the SS50 bus and SS30 bus. This board has undergone only a few modifications by the original owner. One mod fixes a factory error, one interfaces the added baud rate selector switch on the front of the chassis, and another adds support for the floppy disk controller card. The first modification is pretty much spelled out by the permanent marker note left on the board by the original owner. A VIA was placed at the factory which connected the ground plane on the top of the board to the negative 12 volt bus beneath the board. It looks like the fix consists of simply drilling out the mistakenly placed VIA. The baud rate selector and indicator the original owner added taps into each of the baud rate signals on the SS30 bus and returns the selected baud rate signal onto the user defined pin UD4. One of the MP-S serial cards has been jumpered to retrieve its baud rate signal from this pin as well. The baud rate selector switch also taps into ground and 8 volts to supply power to the baud rate indicating LEDs. As the selector switch has two poles and six throws, the LEDs are switched by the second pole. And because only one LED can be on at a time, one leg of each of the LEDs are connected together as a common, which then requires only one current limiting resistor. The final modification I've found on the MPB motherboard is a jumper wire to add support for the DC1 floppy controller card. The manual that came with the floppy disk expansion provides instructions for adding this jumper. The motherboard has address decoding logic which allows the CPU to access one SS30 bus slot at a time. Each slot has two address lines associated with it called RS1 and RS0, which means each card can have a total of four addresses for reading or writing or to act as control lines. The DC1 floppy disk controller card, which must be installed in SS30 expansion slot number 6, requires an additional control line which it takes from expansion slot number 5. At slot number 5, a jumper wire is soldered between the slot select line and user-defined pin UD3. The floppy controller card placed in slot 6 receives the slot 5 select line through the UD3 pin. Once modified, the manual notes that care should be exercised when using slot number 5 for expansion cards. I will probably just avoid using that slot altogether. The remaining two user-defined pins, UD1 and UD2, which exist on the SS50 bus, are not currently used. Per the installation instructions, the original owner connected them back to the power board, but they aren't used for anything from that point. I hope this video adequately documents the as-found modifications to this SWT PC 6800 microcomputer. I'm looking forward to diving into the floppy drive control card and dual floppy drive unit next. Thanks for watching.